Hello and welcome to Tau Capes, where we cover film, television, comics, and games. I'm your host, Cody Nestor. Alongside me is my co-host, Todd Hill. Hey, guys. Today we are discussing the 2024 comic book, Thundercats Number 1. Fleeing through space to escape their dying home world, the Thundercats were attacked en route by their mortal enemies, the Mutants of Plundar. After diverting their damaged flagship to a planet called Third Earth, the surviving Thundercats now strive to rebuild their society in harmony with the New World's natives. But the mutants, determined to possess the Thundercats' mystical gem, the Eye of Thundera, have tracked them down. And they've also forged an alliance with Mumra, the devil priest of Third Earth. Thundercats number one was released on February 7th, 2024, published by Dynamite, written by Declan Shalvey, with art by Drew Moss and cover by David Nakayama. So, Todd, let's discuss Thundercats number one. Spoilers are ahead. Okay. Todd, I'll start off with this. Tell us about your history with the Thundercats. Oh, I go all the way back to the original uh, 1980, I think it was 86 cartoon. Yeah, 85, 86. 85, yeah. 86, uh, the LJN toy line. Mm-hmm. Uh after that, I did watch the, uh, what year was the Cartoon Network reboot? Was 2011. 2011. I, I was kind of digging that for a while till they just pulled the plug. Yeah, <laughs> that first two-parter is epic. Yes. Very epic. Uh, from there, I mean, as far as comic-wise, I remember, I think Marvel did a few back under their star label back in the day, but I had never really read any Thundercats comics other than that, and that was, you know, way back in the day. Yeah, same for me. I have um, a, a brief history with the Thundercats. I really like the property. I like the uh, the idea, the characters overall. Uh, I'm not going to say I've watched every episode of the original show. I've watched some uh, of of the the series we, we talked about last uh, last time. We kind of sat together. We watched the very first episode, Exodus, mm-hmm. of the show. There's a lot of episodes for that first season, like 65, right. to kind of get into syndication and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not going to say I've watched every episode, but I do enjoy the property. I think this is probably the first comic of Thundercats that I've ever read, maybe ever. Okay. So to start off here, I know, I think both of us, we kind of talked over the years. I think we both enjoy reading comics. I don't think, well, I can speak for me, I don't read as many as I used to. Exactly. That's me. I don't read as much as, as I used to in terms of comic books, which I, and I still love the medium, and I'm, I'm glad we're kind of, kind of getting back into this and doing some more. It was good to go back. This is the first comic I've read probably in, I didn't read any last year that I know of. Okay. So this is the first one of 2024 and hopefully more. But I know from previous conversations that we've had, we both kind of feel like no matter how good a story is for a comic, if the art is not, in our subjective opinion, mm-hmm. uh, favorable or likable or digestible or mm-hmm. whatever you want to put into it, if, it, if the art is not hitting for us, it really takes down our enjoyment of the comic book. Exactly. So <clears throat> for you, what did you think to start off? What did you think of the art here? Honestly, I, I didn't really mind it. I thought it was, you know, maybe not the best I've saw, but it was it was really, I thought it was nice artwork. I'll say I'm more of a fan of what I would call like a more, I guess, maybe simple or clean art style. If you're thinking like George Perez, uh, Jim Lee, uh, Neil Adams, Jim Aparo, mm-hmm. I, I like that stuff more. They say the exaggerated type art style. Mm-hmm. I think this is kind of, for me, somewhere kind of in the middle. You know, everybody, I could tell who everybody was. That's a plus. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, I, you know, I actually, I didn't mind the art style. I, you know, it didn't detract from me, which is always a plus. You know, it didn't hinder me from the story. So I would say I liked it. Yeah, I agree. I think if I had to pick a word to describe it, I would say serviceable. Gotcha. It didn't blow me away. There wasn't a lot of panels or pages that I was like, "Wow, it's really." There's one or so we have. A, we have a couple things we'll talk about later that I was mm-hmm. like, "Oh, this is really good." I think it was also a little bit inconsistent uh, in places. I agree with you. Like you know, just for me, if people are like, "Well, what do you think is good art?" Um, I would say I love Jim Lee's artwork. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm with you on that. I love. Um, let's see, um, what is his name? Um, I can't even think of it. Uh, is David Finch? David Finch's artwork as oh, well. Yeah. Um, there's just there's a few. I mean, I, I like the, the '90s McFarlane stuff. Like there's there's you know, quite a wide variety. Like just but for me, you know, if the art doesn't kind of match the tone of the book, or like uh, it, it, if it doesn't if it's not in the vein of something that I really enjoy, sometimes it can detract. I don't think this detracted, but I just think it's uh, it's just serviceable. I think there's a little bit of hit and miss, and I mm-hmm. think like I said, it's a little bit inconsistent for my taste sometimes. Gotcha. But I, it didn't detract from it. Like I still. 
I wouldn't I wouldn't turn away from this book because of the art. Gotcha. And, and I mean, who am I to critique? Right. I'm not an artist, but yeah. I'm a guy on the internet with an opinion, <laughs> and that's uh, that's my opinion on it. I think it's it's fine, serviceable to fine for okay. me. Okay. So uh, kind of take us through the story a little bit. But what's what's going on here, Todd? So basically, we kind of get a little, kind of a condensed version of the Thundercats Exodus story. You know, we see a little bit of the destruction of Thundera. Uh, you know, they're they're the final ship left. Uh, you know, the mutants have attacked them. They can't make their original destination spot. They've kind of had to settle for heading for Third Earth. Uh, we kind of get the explanation in the comic of why, you know, Lionel kind of aged up, why everybody else kind of remained the same. He had some damage suffered to his pod. And that's, I think, my big... Not issue, but I think, I don't know what I kind of expected from this book. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of think my expectations maybe were this was kind of, in a way, maybe kind of being a reboot in a way of it or mm -hmm. a, uh, a retelling or just, I, I kind of expected more different than when I got. And right. I'm not saying that's bad, but I think the, my big um, critique or criticism I would say if I had one is that the story here is a lot it's mostly just a recap of the first few episode of the first episode of the TV show you don't yeah. get a lot propelling you forward until the last few pages right which is fine but I just I kind of wish this was maybe like a, a, a double-sized issue you know, I think it's like 24 pages, like make it 48 and yeah. give me a little bit, give me old, set up the old and set up what universe, because we're definitely living in a slightly modified version of that pilot Exodus episode. Right. Slightly different character design, slightly different characterization. One kind of little shocking thing happens later on. And then maybe another little what's going on here, stinger mm. at the end. But it's a lot of like things, you know, and just like kind of really like sip, slipping into that warm 1985 Thundercats bath. Right, right. And maybe I don't have the same nostalgia for it as other people would. Maybe that's a selling point for others that it's just yeah. firmly seated within that. But for me, I kind of wish it would kind of forge its own path just a little bit more. Yeah. And I think my big inconsistency is mostly with Lion-O. It seems like his face, like the first, there's a, the, the, the big kind of, Splash is like the arrival, and you see the first group shot, and there's our story title of Arrival. Mm -hmm. And it, it, everybody's fine. And Lino has a very, like, it's almost a very toy like, flat plastic face, not a much, not much mm -hmm. detail. And I was like, okay, that's what we're going for. And then later on, we see that shift, and it's like a little inconsistent because he looks in panels, he looks older than he looked in that original panel. Right. Sometimes he looks more cat-like. Sometimes he looks more humanistic. Yeah. So it's a little <clears> bit inconsistent there. That's why I'm talking about the inconsistencies. It's a little bit with Lionel's face and some of the face work, and especially when you're not doing close-up shots of the character. Yeah. It's a lot of very chunky lines and those kind of things. So that's where I talk about it's kind of instant, inconsistent to me. Okay. Also, no snarf. No snarf, yeah. No snarf in any of this. Uh, so what happens here? So we see, again, we get our setup. They escaped. Jaga died. Lino got raised up from, from cub to man. To cub to man. Now he's got to be th thrust into the leadership of the Thundercats. And uh, the mutants have followed them. And we see that the mutants have come back. We also see that uh, Lino has been kind of training with Panthro. Right. Panthro's kind of teaching him. He says he's not ready to really wield the Sword of Omens. Lino's, ha, I'm ready. Yeah, <laughs> he, ta he takes he takes the sword. He he takes the uh, what's it called the uh, the, the claw shield. shield. Yeah, he takes that. He he feels that he's ready, and he wishes Lino would kind of get off my back, old man. <laughs> I'm ready for this. It's very it's a very not to the same extent, but it felt very um, Anakin Obi Wan esque. Oh yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. It's very much like you know Obi does Obi Wan doesn't see how much I've improved, and like he's always criticizing, and right. like it's kind of felt like a little like that. Not gotcha. to that not gotcha. to that same extent uh but uh, take us through uh kind of the the showdown here with the mutants and kind of the mid the meat of the story here i guess you would say so the mutants actually show up the mutant ship actually shows up uh lino actually uses a sword to summon the thundercats uh him and slythe have a big battle i like the way slythe is kind of giving him a lot of bit of the uh the old one two with some of his dialogue you know mm -hmm. i like that kind of exchange they have <laughs> Uh, they get into a clash, and I think, does Lionel actually break the Sword of Omens? Well, yeah, there's a point where Panthro, <laughs> he's kind of like, he's kind of uh, uh, remarking about how Lionel does seem to be doing well in battle mm -hmm. with Slyth, and he's like, wait a minute, 
I know that weapon. Yeah. And he's like talking about Sly's weapon. Yeah. And Sly and Lino kind of clash, ends up breaking the Sword of Omens. Right. And I, my question to you is, is, is there, was there something special about anything that the Sly had weapon wise and in the original show that you remember? Honestly, nothing that's coming to mind. I seem like I remember an episode where the Sword of Omens actually was broken into two pieces, but I don't remember what the logistics of or why it happened. I think it was the way Lino used it, maybe. Mm hmm. Kind of against the code maybe of Thundera. Maybe he wasn't ready. Right. Okay. But I don't remember a specific weapon a mutant's had that would have caused something like that. That's kind of our biggest, besides kind of the little stinger at the end, that's kind of our biggest, like, WTF moment of the yeah. book is, like, when the Sword of Omens actually shatters. Shatters. Now, I think, um, as far as the art goes, I think the strong points were the action scenes. Yeah. Like, I feel like... Um, those were were handled and very well executed and very well done compared to some of the just stationary scenes that we see in the panels that we get. I think some of those action scenes, I think all of that, which is pretty much the last few pages, is just mostly action. Yep. I think those were all done really, right. really well, in my opinion. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, the sword gets broken, and we see um, Lino's kind of, he's distraught. He feels like he's failed. Um, I think, how is it that they uh, actually ends up running off the mutants? Do you remember? Do they run them off? Don't they, like, crash? Or sh somebody crash? I'm somebody, not, I think the ship crashed, didn't it? Um, they wow. Just, <laughs> we just read this, did we not? Hold on, man. Yeah, so this is us coming back from a discussion about uh, how uh, if the mutants actually were run off or right. not from the final battle. But no, they were not run off from the final battle. It ends basically with the Sword of Omens being uh, shattered. shattered. Lino dropping to his knees, and then we get a uh, cutaway to Mumra, who we did see a little bit introduced earlier mm -hmm. in the comic. But we kind of jump to Mumra. He's he feels the energy of the Eye of Thunder, and now he feels that it's gone out of existence, and he basically is kind of pointing the finger at Jaga right at the end of it so what do you feel like that's about Todd it's kind, of, is it, it's kind of insinuating that Mumra and Jaga had a past maybe that's what I'm thinking yeah. like did they 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 knew each other before Jaga and the Thundercats come to third earth which is, I think would be something new because I don't remember anything established before yeah that was that was going to be my question I don't I don't remember anything I think I thought that Jaga and well the rest of the Thundercats had encountered Mumra after coming to Third Earth. Yeah. But here maybe we were hinting at some type of pass between the two. Might be maybe some insinuation that there's something more insidious going on with Jaga. Could be. Could be. Not we Jaga. We, we don't know. Uh some things other things I'll highlight here. We don't get much as far as character wise and and scenes with, with other characters we get uh, one moment with kind of Tiger and, and Chitara. A little bit with the Thunder Did I say kittens. Chitara? Is that her name? Chitara. Okay. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> I was like, I got Cheetah on the mind for a second. I'm like, is it Cheetah or Chitara? Yeah, Chitara. Uh, she and uh, she's kind of out kind of uh, giving Tiger kind of shit about hunting and his hunting skills. Uh, and they're kind of hunting some kind of bunny dinosaur thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tiger is to try to eat it. I do. I do like Tiger's design. They give him kind of a beard. They kind of make him a little bit older looking. What do you think about that? Uh oh. <laughs> okay, here comes Todd's problem. That's the only thing I didn't like. Was oh, that really? Little, was that little little beardy mustachey thing, right. little Tiger? <laughs> I mean, I know back in the day he was supposed to be the elder statesman. If I'm correct, I think Tiger was the oldest. But mm. I don't know. Maybe it'll grow on me. But I just, I just that little like I don't know what it was. I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair I'm sorry, enough. Cody. No, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, we we got we both got different opinions. I, I kind of like just you know I, I don't think they really changed much about the characters other than that's probably the biggest change that I would say. Yeah, it was Tiger's look. Yeah, yeah, it was just kind of the look on him. And I for me I'm I'm fine with it. But I mean overall plot wise and storyline wise, I think again it's a lot of what we what we kind of knew coming out of the TV show, right. original series. There's not a lot of new here and the stuff that is new here it's an issue one. Let's not beat it to death too much. Right. Like I still if any of this looks like that I'm I'm hating on it. I'm not hating on it. I think I actually enjoyed reading it. Um, I think it's just, I think there's, I'm intrigued by where it may go. So I had some things here, Todd, we, we wanted to kind of pick out some stuff. So, um, for you, so like, what would be something that you, you would point out and say, this is something that I really like about this issue? I, I think I really like, you know, like so far the characterization of the Thundercats. I mean, like you say, we didn't get a whole lot with some of them, like Tiger, Chitar and the, you know, the Thunder Kittens, we'll call them. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, I they thought, get very much. They get almost nothing. Nothing. Here. Yeah. They chase that little bunny dinosaur and like bump into each other. And that's that's about it. it. Yeah. But you know, everybody is pretty much who I remember them as being. Nobody has really changed drastically other than Tiger's got a stash. But hey, <laughs> I, I live with it. Right. <laughs> but everybody's characterization seems pretty much spot on for what I know them to be. Yeah. Uh, for me, I would say uh, probably the highlight for me, the, the thing I like the most is probably the action scenes, the introduction of, uh, you know, kind of the Sword of Omens, the first call to the Thundercats, the first Thundercats assemble type thing. Right. Uh, and all the action versus slide I think was handled really well. Um, what about something you didn't like? Uh, tiger Stash? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Tiger. He getting, he's getting dragged <laughs> in this for no reason. It's okay. not that I don't like Tiger. I, I, Tiger's probably, you know, he's one of my, you know, top Thundercats. You know, I think mm. Panther would probably be my number one, then Lion O, then Tiger. Right. <laughs> um, what uh, what would you say, which full page would you say is the best and why? I really like that. I, don't, I can't remember if it was a full page or if it was just a, maybe a half, a top and a bottom, but where the Thundercat symbol was kind of showing on top of the mutant ship, mm -hmm. like it was the big ho. Mm -hmm. I already like that one. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was gonna be my choice. I would say my favorite, like full page, like you know, all panels and everything considered as a whole page, would be the uh, the thunder, thunder, thunder call out, the right. one right before the one you're talking right. about. I really like that last uh, that that last panel of Lino as he like calls out the last thunder. Before before saying like, oh, mm -hmm. like I really like that that shot of him. And he looks very like fierce and menacing there. Yep. And before he looked like a plastic kid's toy, <laughs> which I mean, he was at one point. That's what the show was. True. It was a 30 minute ad for children's toys, True. but still. Thank you, deregulation. Yeah. Uh, do you have a uh, a page that you say is the, the worst full page and why? I mean, really just that one. I mean, again, it's tigers in it, but you know, this ain't the reason why. It's just, you know, the tiger Chitara with a little bit of the kittens chasing that dinosaur thing. Just it was a wasted panel. You didn't really need it. Right. <laughs> Dinosaur bunny thing. Yeah, uh, there, for me, there's a there, it's the there's a page where it starts off with uh, Lino saying he was supposed to be a cub page. There's a it's it goes if you look down the page, the last panel is one more group shot. It's like our second group shot after the big spread, mm -hmm. and it's uh, that's one of the ones where I, Lino his his design and his like face look completely different there. Right. Tiger is very far back. His he's kind of almost featureless. Mm -hmm. That's probably my worst page. I would say if okay. I was looking at it. Uh, do you have an individual panel that you thought was best? Uh, probably the smashing of the Sword of Omens. That was pretty, pretty cool. Just Lino, like, dropping to his knees. Yeah. I really liked, uh, I'm going to give it to, since I kind of gave the full page to the Thunder, Thunder, Thunder. Uh, again, uh, I like the Tigra thing. There's a there's a panel where Tigra is, uh, you see him kind of shrouded and, like, stalking that bunny dinosaur in the uh, oh, yeah, in yeah. the uh, in the brush. I mm. really like how that looked. That's, okay. that's probably my favorite panel. Uh, do you have a worse panel? Uh, anyone Tiger's in. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Poor Tiger. I'm just kidding. Jesus is just taking strays all <laughs> over the place. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, uh, I think the, 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 the worst panel I would say is, uh, there's like, it, it's that, it's that second group shot. It's that oh, yeah. destiny has forced my hand. It's that full right. kind of second group shot for me that I just, I just something don't sit right about it. Like, again, I'm not. I'm not an art critic and I'm not an artist myself, but just for me, I would say that's yeah. probably the weakest panel to me. Uh, if you had one thing that you can change about this issue, Ty, what would it be? Uh, the must not. <laughs> Again, no, all, we're not going to go back Todd's to the very must. Tiger we're fingers. not going back to the mustache. I, honestly, I mean, you know, it went by really quick. I mean, I forgot how fast modern comics read. Mm hmm. Because I, I think I read it. you, and I was like, is this the last panel? <laughs> yeah. Because I downloaded it and read it on my tablet, and I thought maybe something might have gotten messed up. And he was like, yeah, that's the last panel. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the app reader that I use, it tells you how long you took to read it, and I think mm -hmm. I read it like eight minutes. I did another read, but I think it was like mm -hmm. eight and a half minutes I read it in, just kind of first run through, and I kind of went back to kind of like really take a look, a longer look at the panels and stuff. But yeah, it was like about eight minutes I read yeah. it. Because I've, I've always read kind of weird. I'll, I'll read all my dialogue, and then I will dwell on a page, like right. the artwork, mm -hmm. and then I'll turn. Right. I've always done that. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Yeah, I, I think it would be a little bit inconsistent with the art if I could change that a little bit more. Maybe maybe there was a timeline, maybe a deadline or something. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not really familiar with this artist and his work. I kind of looked up some of his things he'd done before. I, I hadn't read any of them. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've heard of them, but I just hadn't read them personally, yeah. so I can't really speak to his other 
art and his other work. But just for me, I think like you, it's a little bit of um, kind of the, the art style and a little bit maybe maybe we make this double size. Yeah, because it seemed like it just went by way too quick. Yeah, like I said, give, give me the old, give me 24 pages of the old and give me 24 pages of new. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, let's really get the ball rolling mm-hmm. on setup of what we're going to be doing in this new Thundercats relaunch. But other than that, that's probably just two nitpicks, yeah. really, from us. Uh, last question here I have a toy tie. Uh, would you pick up issue two? I would. I honestly would. I would kind of like to see where it goes. Would you recommend people spend their money for one? How much does comics retail for now? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about physical versus digital. There's di- there's different ways to buy them, but right. I mean, I would say let's say anywhere from five to ten dollars. Whoa! If you have a way to read it online, <laughs> go ahead and go. Tal case is not a doorstop. <laughs> Yeah, give it a try as far as picking it up physical. I mean, it is a number one. You never know with number ones. There's a lot of uh, very good looking covers. There's like a lot a, of good. There's variants, a million yeah. variant covers for this. I think like with any comic book nowadays. Yeah. So if you uh, if you think if you're a fan of Thundercats and you have a, a cover that you really like of the variants out there, I say give it a pick I, up. Yeah, I go if for you're it. still a physical collector and you're not not mostly just digital now, I would say definitely uh, you know find your favorite variant, pick it up, pick it up for sure. Um, anything else that you kind of want to add, Todd, before I ask you for a review score for this issue? Uh, not really. I mean, it was a, it was a nice, just solid read. I say it went by way too quick, but I, I I kind of enjoyed it. Yeah. I would definitely pick up another issue or give it another try. Absolutely. So we rank comics using a one to 10 scale, starting from one, the ranks are torture, two, awful, three, bad, four, subpar, five, mediocre, six, decent, seven, good, eight, great, nine, amazing, 10, masterpiece. Todd, give us your final thoughts and review score for Thundercats number one. I give Thundercats number one a six on our review scale, which is decent. I think this is just a nice little, maybe too quick of a start, but we've kind of got our foot in the door and I'm interested to see kind of where this story goes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I also give Thundercats a 6 out of 10, which ranks it as decent on our scale. Uh, Double size it, uh, maybe a little bit uh, more consistent artwork, and you probably get an 8 or a 9 from me. But as far as what we got, I'm definitely intrigued. I think I'll stick around and kind of read two and and see what we're setting up with the Jaga, what happens with the Sword of Omen. So you've got me here, Dynamite. I'm intrigued. (laughs) I'll I'll stick around and see where this goes. Yep. So, Todd, tell everyone how they can find us and stay up to date with us on social media. We're at Tal Capes on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Tal Capes Podcast on Facebook. You can also email us at talcapespod at gmail.com. If you enjoy the show, please consider following us on your podcast platform of choice and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Tal Capes Real will return. We want to thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye, guys. See you guys.